This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFPLP 101.9 FM. This meeting of the Eau Claire City Council will come to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Beaton. Councilmember Emanuel. Councilmember Kincaid. Here. Clinghammer. Here. Mitchell. Here. Strobel. Here. Tewall. Here. Don Hayden. Here. Well. Here. Workman. Strong. Here. Thank you, Madam City Clerk, and welcome everyone to the Tuesday, June 7th uh, legislative session of the Eau Claire City Council. During its legislative session, the council deliberates and takes action on the agenda items before us. We have prepared for this duty by working with citizens and collaborating with staff and reading the considerable amount of materials in our packet. We do arrive this afternoon ready to exercise our responsibility. And uh, we welcome those of you who are joining us in chambers and are grateful to community television for streaming and broadcasting these proceedings for people who cannot attend in person. The council does have important business on its agenda this afternoon, so we will get to work straight away. Our work begins with the, count, uh, the consent agenda. Do council members have questions or wish to remove an item for separate consideration? Seeing no such motion, on a motion by Council Member T. Walt, seconded by Council Member Weld, the consent agenda is moved and discussion is in order. And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Kincaid? Aye. Clint Hammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. T. Walt? Aye. Aye. Weld? Aye. Jean? Aye. And the consent agenda is passed. I do have one proclamation this afternoon, which we always look forward to. We in the, we, the royal we in the city. Um, <laughs> Parks and Recreation Month is, is being proclaimed today, and we have a presentation by our Parks and Recreation staff. And just to warn council members, at the appropriate time, we will be donning our gifts this year. Last year, we all got uh, super capes super char character capes and we all put on our capes so now we've set a precedent so every year whatever the gift is we we, um, we go along so I'll meet the Parks and Recreation staff at at the podium So sometimes I, I read a long proclamation, but it, it doesn't seem appropriate or necessary during for, a, for this occasion since we re, repeat this momentous month every month. But just to say briefly before we hear the presentation that we are proclaiming um, Parks and Recreation Month, and now we will get to hear a report about all the good things that our Parks and Recreation does for the the benefit of the public so people have affordable and accessible recreation that's um, that stretches the breadth of every socioeconomic class in our in our city and it's very it's maybe a little undersung but a very important function of what we do to take care and advance the common good so mr. Newkirk thank you um, so as we all know, obviously July is Parks and Rec month. You can see some of the gifts you have up there in front of you. We've got Frisbees and sunglasses so that hopefully we can find a not rainy day and get some activity in outside. Um, one of the things we wanted to point out in conjunction with this is actually um, recently Eau Claire was named one of the, the top five fittest cities in the country based on Fitbit users. Um, Fitbit is a is a device that people can wear that tracks your heart rate how much sleep you get your activity um, really health related things on your person and uh, they track all of their data and for 2017 Eau Claire was named the number three healthiest city in the country based on uh, 10 million Fitbit users nationwide 
taking into account duration of sleep per night, daily reminders to move uh, goals met, so that means that you're advancing in your health and fitness goals, daily steps, daily active minutes, and resting heart rate. So we were number three in the country amongst those 10 million Fitbit users. And uh, the title of the overall fittest city in America, again, is based on average rates for duration of sleep and all of those other, other excuse me, things that I mentioned. So uh, with July's Parks and Rec Month in mind, it goes to show that all of the different programs and activities and facilities that we have to offer here contribute to all of our citizens having a tremendous opportunity to stay fit and stay active and, and represent us as a community. So it was very rewarding to see that. So, thank you. And I think you have other presenters. Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're it. You're I, I guess so. You're well, Pat asked me if I'd be saying a couple words tonight, and I said, sure, I'll, I'll tell the council. And, and now here's Pat Newkirk to talk about Parks and Rec. But my, my role in the department is as manager of the parks maintenance and forestry side of things. It's uh, Ms. Compte and I refer to each other as peanut butter and jelly. We can both stand alone, but you put this together and, and you really got a heck of a sandwich. And, and we've been really proud to work. I've been really proud to work with this this crew behind me for the last 13 years and I'm honored to follow in the footsteps of the likes of Ken Van Ness, Phil Fieber, um, Phil Johnson and, and you know and continue on the uh, properties and the and the facilities that they've established over the years. What what a lot of folks see um, you know we have a thousand acres of parkland and countless numbers of programs that 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 we put on annually and hundred, the, literally hundreds of employees that work in this 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 uh, division. Um, it's what people often see is what I can call the icing on the cake, but there's no better reward for me than being here on a Saturday morning when there's five or six hundred kids on the soccer fields. A tournament just last weekend, the Eau Claire Classic, um, hundred teams in that tournament. That is, to me, the satisfaction that I get, um, do, you know, doing the work I do. And the amount of preparation from staff and it, all staff, top to bottom, that it takes to pull these events off um, is amazing. And I'm just honored to work with them. And, and it's, it's a it's a privilege to be able to manage this system for you as I have for the last, you know, 12, 13 years. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One more thing. Yeah. Um, and it's time to put our sunglasses on. Yes. Um, for just a second, if the rest of you want to just step up and say who sure. you are and what you do, that would be nice. I am Carrie Adam, Recreation Program Supervisor. I oversee specialized recreation, instructional, and concessions operations. Hi, I'm Julie Booth, and uh, I'm also a Program Supervisor for the Recreation Division, and I handle most of the adult um, and some of the youth athletics and uh, assist with some special events. Hi, uh, True Vang, a Recreation Supervisor, and I primarily work with the youth, um, cities, tennis, golf, t-ball, and baseball programs. Because I can. Um, Don Compte, Recreation Manager. I oversee the recreation for the community, Hobbs Ice Center, Fairfax Pool, and some of our athletic facilities. And we just discussed that I'm jelly because I'm, I'm the sweeter one, maybe. <laughs> so. Um, Thank yeah. you. Thank you again for your support. All right. Um, we, we do have a video. Wait a second. Okay. Our gifts this year. Sunglasses. Nice. It's a sharp looking group. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> That's right. That's right. Um, we do have a brief video that kind of tells the story of, of who we are that's newly created. Um, hasn't been released publicly yet. We were planning to do that here, but it's not quite ready. So we'll have that out on our website and be sure that everyone and can see that. It's, it's, it's really neat. It was about a six-month project, and I think it does a great job telling the story of Parks, Rec, and Forestry in Eau Claire. So thank you. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. 
last, uh, let's see, in 2015, I think, the city council um, built itself a, an updated strategic plan. And uh, our city manager insisted that we include some aspects of having fun together. <laughs> So we've been, we've been trying to do that. So this was about as much fun as we're allowed to have. <laughs> that was it. Until next June. That's what we get. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, but we really, uh, obviously, or I, mean, I guess on a more serious note, um, we take care of a lot of things on the local level and keep democracy out alive out here. That's what we're doing. But part of that is making sure that the common good is fulfilled by making a, the breadth of life available for every citizen that we possibly can. So that's what all that was about. And we're really proud of our Parks and Recreation Department. So thank you for all that you do for us. Oh, now we have to get to the other part of our work, which involves making decisions for the public good. And that begins with our business agenda and item 16 which is a resolution granting a temporary expansion of a reserve combination Class B liquor and malt beverage and Class B cabaret license to Grizzlies on Golf Road. Mr. Hofer. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to say for the crawfish boil. For the crawfish boil. Um, this is, as you said, this is an application for a temporary expansion of both the alcohol and cabaret license for Grizzlies. The event itself is pretty similar to uh, prior events they've had there involving pig roasts. This event, though, is going to be a crawfish boil instead, so seafood instead of pork, but otherwise pretty similar to some uh, past events they've had at that location. Um, they're going to expand it out into the parking lot. They have a tent with, that's going to be fenced off. Um, they're going to have a beer trailer, tables. They're going to have some live entertainment, some jazz musicians without amplification. Um, they were told to make sure to, uh, you know, still watch for noise, but again, without the amplification, there was less of a concern there. Um, they've had similar events at that location without, uh, without any problems, and very much you'd see the standard uh, expectations. They're going to have, uh, I believe, at least four bartenders uh, on site, a number of volunteers to monitor. Um, one thing we mentioned is to make sure that they watch uh, the occupancy load inside the building if there's bad weather you know they may have some outside some inside if the people need to come inside that's something for them to watch for but there were no objections to uh, granting this temporary expansion at this location and there is a manager from the applicant here if you have any additional operational questions questions for mr hofer i see none thank you and on a motion, then by Councilmember Emanuel, seconded by Councilmember Beaton, item 16 is moved. Discussion? There being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Clayhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Dewalt? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Wells? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. And that resolution passes. Item 17 is a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between the City of Eau Claire and the Public Arts Council, speaking of new things happening in our city, and the sculpture tour in regards to a temporary art display at the parking ramp. Mr. Koala. <laughs> okay, we get to have a little more fun. Right. Good evening once again. Uh, before you, it, uh, there's a memorandum of, of understanding between the City of Eau Claire, the Public Arts Council, and Sculpture Tour Eau Claire. This MOU is for a temporary display and installation of a piece of art constructed of parking meters to be installed at the North Barstow Street parking ramp. This art will be displayed temporarily at, the, at, a, at a location in the ramp and will be removed again this year so that art students from DeLong, North Star, and South Middle Schools can redesign the appearance of the piece. This memo of understanding includes the responsibilities of the city the Public Arts Council and Sculpture Tour Eau Claire in terms of the agreement. The community services staff finds that this partnership will be beneficial to the parties and the community as a whole by creating a new temporary feature within the parking ramp. Um, it's perhaps Mr. Greg Johnson or Julie Pangala are here to speak to this. If you have questions, if they're not here, I, I believe I can, I can shed a little more light on the location within the ramp where it's at. Um, this would be 
the entryway, say, thank you, um, northwest side of the parking ramp where the meters will be located and they will be tucked into an alcove in that location back in this area right here and secured obviously to to the floor surface in some fashion to prevent their their um, walking off any questions I'd be happy to answer those. questions for mr. Quala councilmember Strong. um thank you uh, you said temporarily um, installed yeah. you're you sort of put them up and then every year you take them down for a new group of students to redesign them is that my correct so that's my that's my understanding too mr okay. Strobel. that they'd be every, every year a new group of students would recreate and redesign their own okay. um, image of the art thank you Councilmember mitchell thank you and then do they go back in the same place is that where is that actually a permanent display but we call it temporary because they're going to come and go yeah that would be the location where they would be ultimately back when they'd come back to for the visit they would that's where they would be located again and I see no further questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. On a motion then by Councilmember T. Walt, seconded by Councilmember Weld. Item 17 is moved. Discussion? <coughs> and there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. T. Walt? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Weld? Aye. Workman? Aye. John? Aye. Eaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Aye. And that resolution passes. Item 18 is a resolution approving an amendment to the agreement with the City of Altoona for transit and paratransit services. Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Madam President. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Um, the Eau Claire Transit has provided service into Altoona ever since the city did um, take the uh, ownership of the transit system and I think if I recall correctly that service has been provided in Altoona for a number of years before that when it was um, owned and operated by the uh, FIES still too. Um, there have been minor changes to that route um, and uh, but no increase in service and the city of Altoona the city council of Altoona took up last year a resolution to um, increase uh, service and asking the city of Eau Claire to if they we could work out a plan to increase service and that was part of the budget that was passed for 2017 that those possible changes were included in the budget and um, the Eau Claire Transit Commission um, had held public hearings as, as well as the city of Altoona and it some changes were proposed and adopted by the commission and those changes are what before you now that would provide uh, an additional number of hours each year of two hours per service day during the week each year and so that would be an amendment to uh, the existing agreement that goes to 2019. So be happy to answer any questions you have. Questions for Mr. Wagner. Um, thank you. So we're, we're adding two hours. Are we are we reducing two hours someplace else in the city, or or just adding an, another couple hours and maybe some extra time? Yes. One one of the changes res would result in a change to Route Four, which is seen here. Um, Route Four would previously would turn on to McKinley Road and go to Seymour and so we added this amounts to a five minute change each trip so we had to reduce some service in the Route 4 area um, that was part of what we were holding the public hearings for to see get public input on those changes thank you and I see no further questions thank you mr. Wright. thank you and on a motion by Councilmember Klinkhammer, seconded by Councilmember Von Hayden. Item 18 is moved. Discussion. There being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Strobel? Aye. T. Walt? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Workman? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. And that resolution passes. 
Item uh, 19 is a resolution declaring property along Hamilton Avenue and Highway 37 at MacArth at the Macar um, oh, at West MacArthur Avenue to be excess land and authorizing the sale of such land to the some of that land to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. Ms. Basom. Thank you. Um, before you is a resolution authorizing um, the section of West Hamilton and 37, this whole entire parcel known as Hamilton Avenue now, um, as excess land and authorizing the sale of 4,500 square, 4,517 square feet to the DOT for a vision triangle. Um, they have proposed uh, a price of $36,150 for the sale of that vision triangle. Um, the remaining parcel would be deemed excess um, for future development. The parcel is currently zoned for industrial, but the comprehensive plan has it listed for um, commercial development. At this time, we don't have anything planned. It's just for the future. Questions for Ms. Ms. Basom? I see none. Thank you. Uh, and then on a motion by Councilmember Mitchell, seconded by Councilmember Strobel, item 19 is moved. Discussion. And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Tewell? Aye. Bonhaven? Aye. Aye. Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. Glenn Cameron? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. And that resolution passes. Item 20, another property transaction resolution authorizes the sale of property at 3023 8th Street. Ms. Basin. All right. So before you is a resolution authorizing the sale of the property across from um, Roosevelt School at 3023 8th Street. It's this triangle right here. Um, the city did declare the property excess in April of 2016. Um, the property has a bike rack structure on it that was provided by um, Safe Routes to School, so the thought was to sell it to the school district at that time. Since then, the adjoining property owner, the adjacent property owner, has um, expressed interest in the property. Um, for the sale of the property, they would be required to relocate the bike rack to the preferred site that the Eau Claire School District has um, designated at their own expense, um, along with the purchase price of $6,000 and then $30 for the um, filing fees. Um, let's see. The school district has um, provided the location um, in the agreement, there are the, spec the specifications that um, for the state as far as what the bike rack will have to look like and um, it will have to last 10 years. Questions, uh, Council Member Mitchell. I seem to recall when we declared that triangle as excess that there was a condition that it, it had to be sold to the school. Is there such a thing on a, on a declaration of excess property? I mean, do we have to do anything to undo that now that we're selling it to the neighbor? Right. I looked at the resolutions and stuff to make sure myself, and it was just deemed that it was excess with, with the um, intent that we would sell it, but it didn't state that we would only sell it to them. That was just kind of our thought at the time. Any other questions? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Council on a motion by Councilmember Zhang, seconded by Councilmember Worthman. Item 20 is moved. Any discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Ron Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Zhang? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Clint Cameron? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. T. Walsh? Aye. And that resolution passes. And yet another property transaction is item 21, a resolution authorizing the purchase of a section of property south of right of way at 4517 Harless Road. Ms. Basom. Um, all right, so before you is the resolution 
authorizing the purchase of 1,118 square feet of land um, for the cul-de-sac here for the Harless Road property. Currently, this property is in the town of Washington. Um, with the street program, they are doing the curb and gutter on Harless Road shortly. And in 1995, there was a temporary cul-de-sac put in. Um, we believe that the developer had intended for the road to continue on. Since that time, development has occurred and there's houses all along here, so the cul-de-sac will now need to be permanent. Um, so we are just purchasing this land to declare it permanent cul-de-sac right away. Any questions, questions for Ms. Basin? And I see none. Thank you. So on a motion by Councilmember Emanuel, seconded by Councilmember Beaton, item 21 is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Wells? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McKay? Aye. Glenn Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Tewa? Aye. Von Hay? Aye. And that resolution passes. Thank you for your work on this matter. Item 22 uh, introduces uh, a decision on some budget adjustments with a resolution authorizing appropriate appropriation adjustment adjustments for the 2017 adopted capital budget. Mr. Solinger. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Before you were two separate budgetary actions um, adjusting the 2017 capital budget. These affect the stormwater capital budget. The first item is a reappropriation from three separate stormwater capital programs into our 2017 citywide stormwater improvements program. These provide the funding necessary for staff to conduct repairs to a stormwater outfall site. Uh, the second action is an appropriation of $250,000 also in the city's 2017 citywide storm improvements program. This provides the funding necessary for staff to construct uh, stormwater improvements related to a pending annexation request. So with that, I will take any questions. Questions for Mr. Solinger. Council Member Worthman. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Solinger, what, can you kind of explain a little bit about what appropriations this money originally was going to be used for? Yeah, a absolutely. So um, originally, uh, the, f the funding was allocated to the 2017 Detention Basins Program, mm -hmm. the 2017 Truax Storm Sewer Program, and the 2016 Citywide Storm Improvements Program. Mm -hmm. So um, because we do have two distinct programs, even though they do, you know, there's a 2016 Citywide Program and a 17 Citywide Program, um, in order to consolidate, we were moving funding from, from the last year's program into this year's program to provide mm -hmm. for this funding. So more okay. of a kind of a paperwork type thing yeah. in this case. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I see no further questions. Thank, thank you. you. Let's see, we're on a motion by Council Member T. Walt, seconded by Council Member Weld. Item 22 is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Deaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Glenn Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Tewa? Aye. Don Hayden? Aye. Aye. Well? Aye. Uh, and that resolution passes. Uh, with our, our next work, we, uh, we move into some resolutions on letting bonds for our CIP projects for 2017. There are several, six of them. and. Uh, Mr. Winzans will t walk us through each of them. The resolution reads, uh, the introduction to the resolution is a, an initial resolu resolution authorizing 2017 Series A and general obligation bonds of the City of Eau Claire not to exceed $12,580,000 aggregate principal amount for the following purposes, which we will um, introduce to the public one at a time. Was that your vision, Mr. Winsent? Yes, it is, Council President. In fact, uh, with your concurrence, I would like to cover 
the uh, six resolutions uh, listed under item number 23, as well as items 24 and 25, those relate to uh, promissory notes and, uh, and refunding bonds uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And does everyone like how Josh and I coordinated today? <laughs> I hate that when that happens. <laughs> So before you uh, this evening are uh, six resolutions authorizing the issuance of uh, $12,580,000 in general obligation bonds uh, of the city of Eau Claire for, uh, for various purposes. Um, these are funding projects that were, were included in the 2017 and prior capital improvement programs. Um, we only issue debt uh, when we need to, when projects are ready to go and for cash flow purposes. So. Uh, we, there are some uh, projects that were included in prior year's CIPs, which are also being funded uh, by, uh, by the bond issues uh, before you this evening. Uh, the 2017 CIP uh, anticipated the issuance of debt totaling a little bit over $20 million uh, this year. Uh, the initial resolutions um, proposed new debt and these are all of the resolutions in items 23, 24, and 25, propose new debt totaling $17,895,000 plus refunding debt of $6,815,000. Refunding is just a different word for refinancing. So that the $6.8 million is refinancing debt that was issued uh, by the city of Eau Claire in 2007. The initial resolutions before you this evening establish the maximum amount of debt that can be uh, issued. The actual amount we end up issuing could be less. All of these um, debt issues will be coming back before the City Council uh, at your second meeting um, in July. Uh, the proposed debt issues are divided into three parts. We've got a Series A, which is uh, uh, 12580000 We've got Series B. Uh, which are the promissory notes, which are nine million five hundred and fifty-five thousand, and then um, Series C, which is two million five hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in taxable debt. Now, the Series C debt uh, is specifically for improvements to the Carson Park Baseball Stadium. The um, uh, the outside group uh, has until June thirtieth to meet their fundraising goal. Um, and if they don't meet that fundraising goal, we will be delaying the issuance of this debt uh, for, for one year. They, and the, the next milestone for them uh, would be June 30th of 2018 for them to meet that, uh, that fundraising goal. So there, while the initial resolution is on um, this evening, as I mentioned, it establishes the maximum amount that we can issue. Uh, if the outside group does not meet their fundraising goal, this amount will not come back before you uh, for award uh, at your second meeting uh, in July. The 2017A issue are tax exempt bonds. Uh, these will be 20 year bonds and will be backed by the full faith and credit uh, of the city of Eau Claire. Uh, included within that uh, issue are, uh, is $3.3 million for street improvements. Uh, $3.4 million for bridge improvements, $3.7 million for fire station, fire trucks, and other equipment, including uh, transit uh, bus, uh, $725,000 for stormwater improvements, uh, uh, $215,000 for park improvements, and lastly, $1.1 million for uh, tax incremental districts number 10 uh, and 11. Uh, the interest rate on the proposed uh, bonds is estimated by our financial advisor to be 3.105%. Uh, given the current market, I expect the actual rates when we solicit bids will be slightly less uh, than that amount. Moving on to the 2017 B issue, which is item 24 uh, on your agenda. Uh, these are 10-year tax, um, excuse me, tax-exempt promissory notes, uh, and they include street improvements uh, that are being funded by special assessments at $1.6 million, uh, sidewalk improvements and uh, improvements uh, to the municipal building, uh, $1.1 million, 
and then refunding uh, various 2007 uh, debt issues, including series A, B, and C, totaling $6.8 million. Uh, this refunding is being done for interest savings only. We're not restructuring uh, any, of the, uh, any of the debt. And the interest savings on this refunding are estimated to be uh, about $523,000. So fairly substantial interest savings uh, by refunding that debt. Most of that debt was issued at interest rates between 4 and 5%, and we're estimating that the interest rates uh, that we'll receive on these promissory notes would be in the neighborhood of 2.25%. Uh, so again, significant uh, interest savings by doing the refunding. And lastly, as I mentioned, the 2017 C issue, which is item 25 on your agenda, would be 20-year taxable general obligation bonds and would be issued for the purposes of improving uh, the uh, bleachers uh, at the Carson Park uh, Baseball Stadium. Uh, we're estimating the interest rate on that issue to be about 3.8%. Uh, just a reminder that there's usually a one-year delay between the issuance of these bonds and when the first payment is due. So the first payment on, these, uh, on this proposed debt uh, would come due in 2018. And at the time that the 2017 uh, through 2021 CIP was approved, we anticipated uh, that the tax levy supported debt in 2018 would be $9.8 million. The actual tax supported debt, including the issues before you this evening, will total seven point, approximately $7.9 million. So as you can see, we've been able through um, uh, underexpending various funds and not having to issue the debt, uh, we're significantly below where we thought we would be uh, just a year ago in terms of, in term, terms of total amount of tax levy uh, supported debt. If the proposed uh, debt issues before you this evening uh, are approved, the 2018 debt levy would be approximately $518,000 higher than the 2017 debt levy. The impact of that on an uh, average uh, taxpayer with a, a home assessed at $150,000 would be about $17.50 per year. In terms of the schedule, the, issue, uh, the initial resolution is before you this evening, June 27th. Uh, the award sale uh, is scheduled for July 25th. Uh, that's when uh, we will take bids uh, for purchasing the proposed bonds and bring those bids back before the City Council uh, and ask you to award those sales. Then the closing date uh, for the bonds is estimated to be on August 15th. I would be uh, happy to answer any questions. Councilmember Van Aden has a question. Uh, in relationship to the funding for the bleachers, now the two million five seventy five. That's the total cost of the project, or is that our fifty percent? That's the total cost of the. That's the total cost of the project because the fundraising uh, will occur over a period of time, or the the what will be pledges that will be, come in over a period of time. So we'll need to front the money, and then we'll be repaid from the pledges, or half of the money will be come from the pledges. Uh, that are raised by the uh, by the outside group. Okay, so 50 percent. They will have to have more than 50 percent of the two million five in pledges before we would go forward with the bond issue. Um, the agreement that was entered into uh, with the outside group specifies the amount uh, that they will have to have raised before uh, we proceed with the project. Okay. Um, and I, I apologize, but off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what that number is. Then the second thing is we had a discussion a while back uh, in relationship to uh, some of our debt trying to get back to pretty much a 10-year financing. I noticed what the significant portion of this is at 20 years. Uh, why, why not 10 years? Well, it, I mean, issue, issuing the debt over 10 years will, would cause a pretty significant spike in our debt service schedule for, uh, for 2018. We certainly could do that. but. Um, in, in essence, that, uh, that number that I presented would pretty, uh, pretty close to double uh, if, uh, if, if all of the debt was issued over a 10-year period rather than a 20-year period. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Mr. Renzonza, can you go back through, I think I have a question on at least a couple of these, A, B, and C. 
cosmos. Whoops. Okay. There, um, okay, I just missed, I missed the 20 year on that. Okay, next one. No, back, back to that one again. Can you tell me what the expenditures are for TID 10 and 11? Uh, these are expenditures uh, related to the uh, related to the confluence project. We've got expenditures for uh, for Haymarket Landing uh, included within that uh, for uh, the, the plaza area, and then for TID number eleven, uh, it's improvements to the uh, parking ramp, the Gibson Street parking ramp. All right, and if you could do the next one. Then. You want to create to see. Oh, you want back B? One. Back one, yeah. Okay. Um, you talked about refinancing uh, the, the debt from 2007 and the interest savings on that. But what was the length of, what was the term on the 2007 debt? Are we are we now extending the, the payment on those? No, we're not. That was 20 year, uh, that was 20 year debt. And uh, so it, it would have been retired in 2027. Okay. And we're now we're issuing 10 year debt. So it's so not it's, extending okay. the term, it's just uh, being done for interest rate savings. And then the last question, uh, Council Member Von Hayden hit on this on the, uh, the stadium. Um, we, we issued the debt, we front the money, the pledges come in. When the pledges come in, does that go to retire the debt or where, where does that, where does that go? Well, the, the, the pledges will come into into us and yes, be used to retire the debt. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Clickham. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Mr. Winsens, uh, on the uh, tax burden for 2018, uh, I think it was the third from the last slide. I'm not sure. Whoops. Um, I'll get to it. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only question is, uh, does that anticipate the issuance of the uh, the uh, debt, the twenty five, two point five million for the? Yes, it does. It include okay. it includes that amount. So if we don't issue that, That'll it be will less. be less. Okay, yes. thank you. And Council Member Tuba. Thank you, Council President Kincaid. Just to reiterate, as I've learned, the use of our debt is for capital only and not operational. Our bond rating is AA1 with Moody, so we're, we're good on that. What percent of our budget is in the debt? So when we're bringing revenues in of our taxpayers, how much are we having to spend to serve with this debt um, in percent? Yeah, and, and, it, and it, it, of, the, of the general fund uh, debt, um, it's less than, I think it's, it's about, uh, 22 to 23 percent right now and we we have goals to keep the debt within what limits below 25 percent okay thank you and further questions we do have to take each resolution uh, separately yes please um, so we'll have some aing a name here hopefully <laughs> Any, um, any other questions? Are you ready, Madam Clerk? Oh. We'll just go through them, okay? Starting with uh, 23A, which is a resolution authorizing not to exceed $720,000 on general obligation bonds for the uh, acquisition, construction, and improvement of storm water sewer improvements. On a motion by Councilmember Klinkhammer, seconded by Councilmember Von Hayden, item 23A is moved and discussion is in order. And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Jaw? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Tewald? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Worthless? Aye. And that resolution passes. 23B is a resolution authorizing $3,710,000 in principal amount um, for the purpose of acquisition, construction, improvement, and repair and replacement, repair and replacement of the fire stations. On a motion by Councilmember Mitchell, seconded by Councilmember Strobel, item 23B is moved. Discussion. 
And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kate? Aye. Clinkhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Tewell? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Jaw? Aye. And that resolution passes. 23C is a resolution authorizing not to exceed $3,350,000 for street improvements and uh, for acquisition, construction, and improvement of streets and street improvements, which includes lighting, signage, curbs, and gutters. On a motion by Councilmember Zhang, seconded by Councilmember Worthman, item 23C is moved. Discussion. And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. Clinkhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. T Wall? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Wells? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. And that resolution passes. 23D is a resolution authorizing not to exceed $3,445,000 in principal amount for the, ac the financing, the acquisition, construction, and improvement of bridge improvements. On a motion by Councilmember Emanuel, seconded by Councilmember Beaton, item not D, 23D is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Kincaid? Aye. Clinkhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. T. Walt? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Jean? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. And that resolution passes. 23E is a resolution authorizing not to exceed $250,000. Uh, for the purpose of financing the acquisition, construction, and improvement of parks and public grounds, including parks equipment. On a motion by Councilmember Tewalt, seconded by Councilmember Weld, item 23E is moved and discussion is in order. And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Clayhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Tewalt? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Aye. And lastly, 23F is a resolution authorizing not to exceed $1,155,000 for the purpose of financing the acquisition, construction, and improvement of community development projects in our tax incremental financing districts. On a motion by Councilmember Klinkhammer, seconded by Councilmember Van Hayden, item 23F is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Tewalt? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. Clinkhammer? Aye. And that brings to a close item 23. Item 24 is a, res a resolution authorizing not to exceed $9,555,000 for the financing, the acquisition, construction, and improvement of streets and street improvements. On a motion by Councilmember Mitchell, seconded by Councilmember Strobel. Item 24 is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Strobel? Aye. T. Walt? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Wilkins? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. 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 And that resolution passes. Lastly, and item 25 is a resolution authorizing not to exceed $2,575,000 for financing the acquisition, construction, and improvement of parks and public grounds, including the baseball stadium improvements. On a motion by Councilmember Zhang, seconded by Councilmember Worthman, item 25 is moved. Discussion on the baseball stadium. There being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember T. Wall. Aye. Von Hayden. Aye. Well. Aye. Worthman. Aye. John. Aye. Beaton. Aye. Emanuel. Aye. Kate. Aye. Clayhammer. Aye. Mitchell. Aye. Strobel. Aye. And that resolution passes. The finance department can get to work. Uh, item 26 is a new topic, a resolution authorizing the Community Services Department to, ex, um, to accept 
the Lake Pro A Lake Protection Grant from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Mr. Walla. Thank you. We've recently been notified that we received a Lakes Protection Grant from the DNR and we would use these funds to support continued alum treatments to the uh, Half Moon Lake body. We have anticipated budgeting every other year an amount of money to for that ongoing treatment of alum. Alum, if if you will, um, is uh, is is intended to bind the free phosphorus, creating a clear water column, and the clearer water column will encourage the native aquatic vegetation, the desirable vegetation that we want to uh, outcompete the the invasives that we have been working on so hard for so many years. But the Lakes Protection Grant is a is another. Um, kettle of uh, funding for us available, so we were real happy to see that uh, door open for us. Questions for Mr. Kuala, Council Member Mitchell. Thank you. So is this a three-year grant? Uh, this this grant will cover this year, and, and, and uh, we'll have to apply for an extension if we wanted to get it into 19, but uh, my understanding is it should not be a difficult for us to apply for an extension for that grant. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Worthman. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Koala, just to follow up, I think you get this question every year from me. So, um, But since I've been on council uh, nine years, it seems like every year we're getting a grant to do alum treatments. And I guess my question is, are we seeing progress? Is Do we feel like the money is well spent? Obviously, this is a grant, but are we seeing some progress that could say we're finally winning uh, in terms of addressing this? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I would, I would um, definitely... Um say yes, we are seeing success. Um, we've got events programmed. Uh, the triathlon uses the body of water. The dragon boat event uh, would not be using Half Moon Lake for their event um, if we did not have a, a, you know, a suitable body of water. Uh, take, a, take a look at Half Moon Lake Beach House on a warm summer afternoon. The, the lake is considerably well used uh, to the point where we are considering with the direct division is considering possibly reprogramming that at some point in the future and having a lifeguard there which would be a huge testament to the the uh the development of better water quality um just to clarify uh, mr worthman the annual treatments we've been doing like our herbicide treatments and that's designed to that's targeting the uh, curly leaf pondweed the aquatic invasive that's you know out, you know, trying to uh, outcompete the, na the natives. The alum treatments um, we applied for, we applied alum to the lake in 2011 for the first time to con yeah in, to control the, the algal blooms. And uh, research at the time had indicated that perhaps it would be a, a one one time treatment. As we move on, it's it's there are some gaps in the coverage, so we 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 applied alum again this year, but it was a just to the western arm of the lake, and as we go forward, we're, our hopes and the research that um, our partners at UW Start or, uh, Stout are doing with us, our hopes are to diminish that amount of treatment uh, to to eventually just spot spot treating the lake as necessary. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Quicken. Um, thank you, Mr. Sure. Um, I assumed when we were approving this that it was the whole lake done every time we did it. So is that not the case? That's the, the, the initial time was for alum in 2011 was a whole lake treatment. Okay. Uh, this this last spring was just the western. It was focused on the western arm of the lake. Okay. Does that include the western part? Does that include Bronze Bay as well? Or uh, from the beach, not quite to Bronze Bay. If you're traveling in oh. in, the, in that direction, okay. from the beach area towards Bronze Bay, but not entirely not into there. Bronze Bay. Mr. Kuala, the uh, Carson Park Causeway, Causeway project, will the, both of these can proceed, obviously? Or? Yes. The, the alum, we actually, the alum treatment occurred um, about a month ago. Oh. We've now got, you know, we had, and we had money budgeted for it. Now we've got, you know, funding support to help us offset the cost of that. And, and the Causeway project begins July 5th. Yes. <laughs> and the, yeah. the alum will still be effective. Oh, oh ex absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It, if you can imagine a, a somewhat of a, a coating or a layer on the on the lake uh, bottom to to control the, um, f the to basically bind 
the phosphorus. And I'm, I'm short of being a water chemist. I can't speak like our friends at the DNR, the Discovery Center, but it binds up the phosphorus, uh, minimizing or managing the algal blooms. Hmm. I see. It's an important project. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. I see no further questions for you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Let's see. On a motion then by Councilmember Emanuel, seconded by Councilmember Beaton, item 26 is moved. Discussion? The resolution is to accept the grant, the, okay, which is stated correctly. There being no further discussion, count, uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McKay? Aye. Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. T. Wall? Aye. And that resolution passes. Item 27 is the last uh, item on our business agenda tonight in a, a resolution declaring Eau Claire's commitment to participate in municipal actions that strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change, recognize the importance of engagement at all levels of government in this endeavor, and support the objectives of the Paris Climate Agreement. This uh, resolution is brought by Council Members Beaton and Worthman and I would invite them to speak to their resolution. I don't believe, Mr. Peters, we had planned for staff input. I don't see it on my agenda. Okay. Do you know who's? I'll speak. Council Member Wertham. Thank you, Council President. Uh, and if I may first extend a thank you to fellow Council Member Beaton um, for the work on this and to city staff, uh, city manager's office um, for the help in crafting this as well as the city council president. Uh, for her guidance, um, and thank you to everyone who showed up this evening as well. Uh, I hope uh, our meeting was interesting to you and learned some new things uh, watching us um, approve uh, these other items. So, um, I think what, what we're here tonight to talk about is uh, something that is one of the most pressing uh, and uh, demanding challenges of our time. And last year, as many people know, our state saw three 100-year floods and a 1,000-year flood up in Ashland. Uh, people's homes have been washed out. Uh, people's livelihoods put online. Uh, if you're my father, you're seeing crops are drying. You're seeing some years where crops are flooded. Uh, if you live in the city of Eau Claire, uh, you may live near a river where uh, your home is put in danger. Uh, in fact, flooding is the fastest growing and most costly natural disaster in our country uh, today, and it's increasing. Uh, we're not only talking about how that impacts us locally, but tonight we're talking about how our actions on a local level, in fact, play a part across the world. And uh, many people know in the news and have seen that um, one of the biggest coordinations uh, to ever happen on this globe was between 150 ratifying countries that came together to adopt the Paris Climate Agreement to say that uh, all of these things that are happening in our world, whether it's fires or homes that are underwater uh, or lives lost, uh, that we're going to address that in a, in a comprehensive worldwide way. And uh, I think that the recent withdrawal of our nation from that agreement has seen a local action being taken to say what can communities do on a local level to reduce their carbon emissions. Uh, which, which impact climate change. And so already to date in the last few months, um, over 100 and, uh, sorry, 290 mayors have come together with 1,200 cities, universities, including our own here in Eau Claire, uh, hospitals and businesses, all saying, what is our role uh, in strengthening our response to protect the environment, to protect uh, each other across this globe? Uh, and so today, um, just a quick fact that I want to throw out is, the, is, is that already actually in Eau Claire over the last 50 years, we've had a 2.6 degree increase annually in our uh, temperature. Uh, and that's expected to actually increase by another 3.5 degrees by 2050. That's six and a half degrees change uh, over 80 years. Uh, and so uh, that has real impact when, whether it's an algae bloom on our lake here in Eau Claire, uh, whether it's uh, people who hunt and fish, seeing um, things disappear or uh, you know, certain species 
um, invasive species show up, it's a drop in lake levels, it's an increase in vector-borne diseases, which our uh, health department uh, knows a lot about. So in fact, in our uh, comprehensive plan, we've already, already identified what our role is and the fact that we should be taking action on a local level to address climate change. Uh, what this resolution does tonight is say, um, that's not enough and we'd like to go a step further. We're doing good things, make no mistake. Uh, and we have a strong uh, city council that backs uh, initiatives to protect the environment. We also have a sustainability commission and we have wonderful uh, local, uh, private, public partnerships. But we want to go a step further. And I'll let my fellow council member uh, Beaton talk a little bit about the resolu resolution itself. Um, but uh, just to ask that the city council consider uh, this, this, um, this resolution in light of all that is going on in light of the fact that we can make a, a bigger difference on our local level. It's essentially what we're saying tonight is how can we step up uh, and, and impact climate change in a bigger way. Um, and I think also work with all the citizens who care deeply about this very issue. Um, so thank you. The, the chair recognizes that we skipped over the question part, but um, just as a matter of our protocol, when we have an initiative that's brought by a council member, it, it, it is my experience and my prerogative <laughs> to allow an introduction and uh, of, that pro of that resolution by the authors. And so that's what we're doing. There will be plenty of time for question and discussion, though. So we have plenty of time. Just a little bit out of the ordinary, just to explain. And Council Member Bean. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Worthen, for um, your work on this. And I'd um, like to echo your sentiments and, and thanking city staff, city council president, um, for their help on this. I think that um, the input that we got from city staff and the city council president um, really built uh, the strong resolution that I feel that we have in front of us. Um, also, thank you to all of you who, who joined us today. It's It's been clear to me through this process that uh, the city of Eau Claire truly cares about what is happening, um, how, how climate change is affecting our own community, and how it's affecting uh, communities around the world, um, how it will change our future as, um, as a young generation and uh, affect futures of, um, of generations that come after us. So uh, thank you for your support. Um, so the, the resolution that we have in front of us um, is, is a combination of a, a symbolic gesture that, um, that says, you know, no matter what's happening um, in the state or in the international, the, the national government or even internationally, the city of Eau Claire is committed to, uh, to uh, um, tackling climate change. Um, but I think more importantly, it has three action items that would commit us to um, tackling climate change uh, even more aggressively than what we are doing now. Um, first, uh, I think a lot of you probably all already know that uh, our city has a commitment that we, um, that we committed to, I believe, in 2008 um, that would, uh, our, it, it, the commitment is to um, introduce clean energy, 25% um, clean energy for our electricity use for the city organization. Um, uh, by 2025, as well as 25% uh, clean fuel usage by the, again by the year 2025. Now um, we've already reached that goal uh, for electricity. We're already using 25% clean energy for um, our electricity in, the, in our city organization, which I think is truly incredible that we've reached that already. Um, you know well before the, the goal um, year. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't met that for our fuel usage. But um, so the first, the first item is to reevaluate that goal and to um, make it stronger, especially for electricity, um, so that we can continue to be introducing clean, uh, clean energy into the, our city organization. Uh, second, the, the second action item would be to um, kind of make a general statement to staff to look into investing in clean energy infrastructure when they feel it's possible. Um, again, this, 
we're not making any statement about the budget necessarily. It's just a, a statement to staff that we want to be continuing to look into that and looking into it even, even further. Um, clean energy infrastructure would include um, stuff like solar panels. Wouldn't it be great to see uh, solar panels on City Hall um, uh, in, investing in, in clean energy with Excel Energy? Um, including, you know, investing in practices that would uh, encourage more clean energy happening outside of City Hall. So investing in a, um, more strongly in our transit system to reduce carbon emissions that way. Um, and third uh, would be to direct the city to um, engage in public and private partnerships along with nonprofits to, d um, to evaluate any long-term plans that we can have um, to reduce carbon emissions as a community as a whole outside of our city organization. So um, this, this item is um, particularly, I think, important um, and is um, outlined in our comprehensive plan in the, in the sustainability chapter and in the health chapter. So um, I, I do think that these, all three of these action items, um, in some ways we're already doing them and I think that these are going to be uh, pushing us to do even more um, on these goals and, and I think that it's, it's certainly sustained or uh, supported by our, um, our documents, our founding documents and the documents that guide us in every meeting. So um, with that, I would be happy to uh, answer any questions as I'm sure uh, Councilmember Worthman would. Questions for the authors? Councilmember Strubble? Uh, Councilmember Beaton. Um, I I'd, I'd probably maybe don't have all my pages here, but I don't see those action, action items that you were talking about on the resolution. The last three, be it therefore? Each, oh, okay. be it therefore? Um, Ms. Merle, do you have a paper copy of the resolution with you? And thank you. Usually I print myself one because I do a lot of writing and I can't find mine. So if I can use yours. Thank you so much. I'll be writing all over it. No. Thank you. Thank you. Um, further question, any uh, further questions for the authors? Are you going to wait for the discussion period, Council Member Strobel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, on a motion by uh, Council Member Beaton, seconded by Council Member Worthman, because that's how you're listed on the agenda. Uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, Item 27 is moved and discussion is now in order. Council Member Van Aden. The resolution and the now be it therefore resolves, the three of them at the end are very laudable and are very positive. I think they are things that we as a city have committed to. I have no problem at all uh, supporting those as a concept and I think we anything we can do to reduce uh, climate change and hold the thing in and, and to make our city more efficient what well, we've done with the lighting we've done with the other things we've looked at the buses and some of the others and continuing going forward with that and, and so all of those are very positive the, the, the only problem I have with the resolution is I think we're getting into politics and this should be a nonpartisan type issue and so my opinion is is that we take out any references to the uh, objectives of the Paris Climate Agreement and take out the uh, three whereases on the top of page 129 and then the rest of the resolution to me makes a lot of sense so I would propose an amendment to strike in the first paragraph or in the heading up there and support the objectives of the Paris Climate Agreement 2015 Article 2 and elimination of the three whereases on the top of page 129. I'd second that. A motion to amend has been offered uh, and seconded 
and I'll just comment on that. Um, are you ready? Are, did you get that? Okay. And comment on your motion to amend. Right. As I said, the basic resolution, you know, it, it, there's nothing wrong. The resolution is very good. It, in fact, I believe we have already approved all of these items. I don't see anything new, so much new in here from what we have. I think the references to the other things as the city council is a nonpartisan and I think we should stay out of politics. We should do our things as a city to improve all of these, but I don't think we should get into national politics and that at the city level. Um, council Member Strobel is the seconder. Yeah, and, and I seconded that basically for the same reason. I, I think uh, a lot of this is uh, actions the city is already doing, has already said they were going to do. Um, the only thing sort of different I see in here is the references to the, uh, the Paris Agreement, which again were uh, actions of the federal government, which I don't think belong in, in city government. Uh, this is a nonpartisan uh, group, and I don't particularly appreciate, appreciate resolutions that bring forth political um, conversations into this uh, arena. So that's why I would support taking those out, and then I would support the rest of the amendment. On the motion to amend, Councilmember Mitchell. Thank you. I, I can't support the motion uh, to amend, and I guess we could argue about what is political and what isn't political, but I would draw our attention to the fact that the city publishes uh, a carbon footprint report. There was one published in 2011, which was a baseline report. And the last one was published in May of 2016, and it's, it's found on the city's website. And there you can see the data that supports the city's efforts to reduce emissions. Uh, and just as an aside, it notes that the upgrades in the wastewater treatment plant account for a great deal of that progress. But more importantly to the point, uh, that 2016 report um, puts our efforts in the context of the Paris Agreement. And it says in that report that reducing the city's carbon footprint will aid the nation in meeting the Paris Agreement goals. So I, I don't think that this has to be seen uh, as something completely, uh, or even for that matter, political. Uh, I think that if we look at uh, that report, uh, I think we could see that mentioning the Paris Agreement in this resolution is perfectly appropriate. So I will be voting no on the amendment. Councilmember Emanuel. Thank you, Madam President. I also will be voting no on the amendment. Um, I can't agree with the logic that has been brought forth um, on several of the points. One, everybody sitting here except for um, two staff members are politicians. So we do politics, and that's our job. And second, this is an issue that um, I've seen leadership from both main parties take a, a stance on. In fact, the uh, governor of Indiana, who is a staunch Republican, has come out nationally and spoken of why this needs to be a bipartisan issue. Third, we play in the sandbox with multiple levels of government. We already receive funds from the federal level, from the state. And if we just call a spade a spade, this administration is threatening to cut multiple funding streams to municipalities. We're not even sure if we're going to receive public transportation dollars like we used to. We're not even sure if we're going to receive community development block grant dollars like we used to. And at some point in time, we have to take a stand to say, so this is about our city, and this is our opinion on our city, and this is what we can do in our wheelhouse. I'm not disillusioned that we can affect the rest of the country. However, for this little piece of real estate that we have in Eau Claire, I think it's important and appropriate to go ahead and call a spade a spade that this is about the Paris Agreement. This is about the objectives, and I'm certainly won't be able to support the amendment. Councilmember Beaton. Thank you. Um, while I agree that this body should not be partisan, I, or, yeah, this 
it should not be partisan. We should be uh, nonpartisan. Um, I don't think that this resolution um, is that. Um, this resolu resolution um, is about joining um, hundreds of cities, uh, 274, multiple states, and other private and, and public institutions, um, multi um, counting in thousands of, of municipalities and institutions in total, um, to, to say that we, despite what's happening in the White, White House and in the Capitol, we are committed to addressing climate change. Um, you know, joining these thousands of municipalities and, and cities and, uh, and institutions is not a radical idea. Um, we're going to be joining people across the country and making this statement. And, um, and I don't think that that is partisan, um, certainly, um, certainly not. Um, I, I would also like to remind everybody that, this, uh, that the Paris Climate Agreement is, is ratified by um, most countries, uh, 148 countries in our, in our world, and um, was denied by three. Um, one that didn't think that it went far enough, one that doesn't, it's in a civil war and doesn't have a government, <laughs> and uh, the United States of America, uh, the, second, um, the second leading producer of carbon emissions in our world. And so, um, you know, I think that in, in addition to joining those thousands of municipalities and inst institutions, um, I would be proud to join those uh, other 148 countries that, um, you know, share many different types of ideologies, but all are committed to uh, protecting our world. So, Councilmember Worthman. Thank you, Council President. And I won't be supporting this motion. Um, and I think I'll kind of focus on uh, Councilmember Von Hayden's uh, discussion around the fact, you know, around the removal of the first whereas is. Um, but just to point out that those are in there to point out essentially. The, the goals we've already had to uh, reduce our carbon emissions, uh, but also um, to essentially s set up the fact that, uh, you know, we're ready and prepared to meet better and stronger goals. Uh, and so the, the, the whereas clauses, I think, are, are essentially a way of saying, you know, we're doing a great job, but under Paris, which asked all of these nations to actually do more, um, you know, that's where we want to go. And so, um, if you look at the last Be It There for Resolves, um, each of them talks about a stronger goal, a stronger commitment. Uh, you know, the one is about our city's own use of clean energy. Uh, the, the second one's about um, a stronger commitment to infrastructure that's around clean energy. And the third one, obviously, uh, has to do with um, working community-wide with partners uh, on, on steps we can actually take to get closer to the goals of, of Paris. So um, I, I don't want there to be a a thought here that this resolution is just affirming what our city already does. It should be clear that we're saying we need to go a step further. Council Member Tewell. Thank you, Council President. I think when I look at this issue, I do support this amendment. And the reason is I like clarity. I understand what it says. I understand what our energy policies have been. And I remember one time when I, as a council member, questioned a committee report. And I was told that was disrespectful because of the hard work they've done. And I think it was a good thing. We've got a great group working on this. We've got a great city working on this. And I will not diminish them by saying, but you need to do this, you need to do that. We can lament what does other control do, the federal, state, but we are local control. And I like to have clarity that I can understand what is written. I do not all know all the whereases, exceptions, rules of the Paris Accord. I don't think the average citizen understands everything that goes. So it's a lofty goal to say we're going to be at this level. Rather, I'd like to see the clear plan that the energy group has put together. We will do this in Eau Claire. We will do this. We will do this. The council will then look at that and say, we like this. This supports our strategic plan. This supports our vision. We're behind it. The more we externally reference, be it political or not, the less clarity we have. 
this is a community that has proven they care about the environment, they care about people, they care about all sorts of factors. So that's why I like to make it briefer, keep it clear to that issue. And then there's no doubt of what we support when we vote for it. Thank you. And further discussion on the motion to amend? There being none, clerk, please call the roll. An aye vote passes the motion, a no vote, obviously, doesn't. Madam? Councilmember Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Nay. Worthman? No. Jean? No. B? No. Emmanuel? No. Kincaid? No. Clint Aye. Mitchell? No. Strobel? Aye. Aye. And that motion fails seven to four. So we are back to the resolution as in its original form. Further discussion? Councilmember Emanuel. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I have an amendment that I would like to bring forth, and I'll speak to it. I'll, um, maybe if I can have one more. Thank you. I'll wait till my fellow colleagues have a copy in front of them and then should we put this up in, in front Councilmember Emanuel is offering a motion to amend, which we will put on the monitor here in just a moment. Councilmember Emanuel. Thank you, Madam President. Um, with your permission, I'd like to read the motion and then seek a seconder and then I can speak on this. I'd like to add a paragraph to the resolution that would read, be it further resolved that the City Council re refers review of the objectives of the Paris Climate Agreement to the Sustainability Advisory Committee and ask that the committee return to the City Council with an executive summary report regarding how the City is currently addressing agreement objectives and for any objectives not being addressed, a list of suggestions the City may consider for action and amends the committee's work plan to reflect such referral. A motion is before you. Uh, is there a second? A second? Seconded by Councilmember Beaton. And further to your motion? Council Thank Member you, Madam President. Hill. I think that it's really important to offer um, very concrete, actionable items of what we can do here in our community, here in our city. I think that, by and large, our public is disappointed that our nation is not participating in the Paris Climate Agreement. And so, for Eau Claire, Wisconsin, I think that citizens would like to know, one, what are we doing as a city about this? We'd just like to know, number one. And second, if we're not doing something, could we do something more? And we have a local group of experts who we have appointed to study um, sustainability issues and to advise the council on what they have studied. And we have recently gone through some changes and, and the council recently worked with the advisory committee to come up with a work plan. And within those changes, we have the purview, both, both parties have the purview to suggest a change to the work plan. So this motion would then direct a change to the work plan, which is distributed to colleagues as well. It's on the bottom of page two, and it's highlighted in light blue color. And it gives exact wording of how this could be implemented with the Sustainability Advisory Committee. 
this is not making a commitment that we're going to do things other than one we want a, a, a summary and two if there are policy considerations that we can do here in Eau Claire then bring it back to this legislative body and we can make those considerations then discussion oh councilmember Beaton thank you uh, thank you councilmember Emmanuel for bringing this forward I think it um, really strengthens the resolution and I think it um, really makes very good use of uh, the new process that we have with the committees um, I think this is a great job for the um, uh, sustainability advisory committee um, I uh, it occurred to me um, after you presenting this this um, amendment that uh, we haven't actually stated what the Paris Acl climate agreement is um, and with your permission um, City Council President I'd like to briefly state the two objectives of the agreement um, I'm just going to question you a little bit the, okay. the agreement is a 26 page yes. agreement yes <laughs> it'll be very brief its objectives are yeah. far reaching and long yeah. so I'm not sure um, okay. we'll see if it, you can define which objectives or so um, I, I, I'm again I'm not um, a, an expert on the Paris climate agreement but it has two um, main and broad objectives with um, you know sub objectives underneath that uh, as far as I understand it uh, the first would be to um, for the United States if we were to point, point of order please should we not address the amendment prior um, I yeah that's a, that's a good question but I do believe the point has come in which we clarify what is the Paris Agreement um, in ten, uh, briefly yes and, briefly. and and I am speaking to the uh, amendment mm -hmm. um, briefly because yes uh, it would if the United States were to commit to the Paris Climate Agreement it would commit money internationally um, to um, assist countries that are being disproportionately affected by climate change um, obviously that's not something that the city can uh, participate in um, but the one that I think is uh, most pertinent to our city is um, an objective to keep global temperature rise below two degrees Celsius um, the Paris climate agreement doesn't have um, very specific ways that the international community would, would do that and I think that um, that's really where this amendment would help um, our city really determine how um, what our part is in in preventing that temperature rise so um, that's that's the that's the agreement and and that's um, you know surely what this that part of the agreement agreement is surely what this resolution is addressing and I think that this amendment um, really um, makes it um, entirely clear exactly how we're gonna um, achieve these goals that we've outlined in this in this resolution so so the chair al allowed us to introduce a little context into uh, what is the Paris Agreement and what would a review involve and which objectives if any and there's lots of questions let to re yet to remain but that introduce a little context into the rest of our discussion about this motion to amend Councilmember Mitchell thank you madam president I have a question for Councilmember Emmanuel uh, and so could we ask ha, has she talked with staff and or uh, leaders of the committee to see if this is something that they actually can do I had a conversation with um, staff since last week I've been in discussions with them and also with Councilmember Worthman he's the only person I have talked to about this and it's my understanding that he called the chair of the sustainability advisory committee and asked about specifically this amendment is this of interest and is this doable my understanding is not speaking on behalf of the committee <laughs> by any means that there was an interest from the chair and that this would be a good endeavor for them to work on now I know the chair is here I know the chair wouldn't speak on behalf of the committee but it's my understanding he would be willing to speak if called upon Councilmember Weld, did you have a questions or discussion on the motion to amend? Um, 
the oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, Council Member Tewell. Thank you, Council President. I appreciate the work putting this um, amendment together. Um, I won't be supporting it. I think it again falls in the clarity. The Sustainable Action Committee is certainly free to use this, the document, the 27 articles of the Paris Accord. They're free to use all other research. We don't have to specifically assign that as an action item. And I think simply to say to do a comprehensive review or something like that does that. So again, brevity is my thought on this. Thank you. Other discussion on the motion to amend? Uh, there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Weld. Aye. Worthman. Aye. John. Aye. Eaton? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Kincaid? No. Blake Hammer? No. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? No. Tewalt? No. Ronnie? No. And that motion to amend passes six to five. So we are back to the resolution as amended. That motion is part of the resolution. And discussion. Uh, continues on the resolution as amended. Any further discussion on the resolution? Is that Council Member Emanuel? Thank you, Madam President. This would be my, my final comment on this item here. My name is Brian Larson. I'm oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Larson, but um, in, it's, as a matter of protocol, you would have to be invited to approach oh. the podium. Sorry. Or, or sorry to. <laughs> Council Member Emanuel. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think the, the overarching and most compelling reason for me to support this tonight is thinking about the future. As most people know, I have a new baby in my life who is such a joy. And my new baby has one friend. Her name is Abby. She was in here for about 30 seconds and she <laughs> left. And well, they play on my kitchen floor and hold hands and poke each other and laugh. And one day Abby and Nico are gonna be grownups and they'll be parents and then maybe grandparents and maybe great grandparents. And I'd like my son to be able to say, you know, my mom did her part in our little corner of the world. That matters to me. There is so much to learn, so many opportunities to find out where we can do better, and I am convinced that most people in Eau Claire share this value set. So I certainly will be supporting this. Thank you. And further discussion on the resolution? There being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Worthman. Aye. John. Aye. Eaton. Aye. Emmanuel. Aye. Kincaid. Aye. Blake Hammer. No. Mitchell. Aye. Strobel. No. Tewalt. No. Rodney. No. Well. Aye. And that resolution passes seven to four, as amended. Thank you for a good and civil discussion. Uh, and thank you for um, participating, being present. The chair does not allow clapping. Excuse me, excuse me. The chair does not allow clapping. <laughs> we do have two ordinances for action tonight. Um, our final two actions for the evening are begin with item 28, an ordinance in accordance with section 66 of the Wisconsin statutes annexing to the city, um, let's see, I lost my place here, annexing to the city um, part of the right of way of 93, uh, circumscribed by Highway 93 and Old Town Hall Road and Interstate 94, known as the mega co-op petition. 
Mr. Tuffy. Uh, this is the property located off of Highway 93 and I-94 on the southeast quadrant. It's 54.15 acres of land. It's currently vacant and there is an active mining permit on the property. Uh, the parcel is within the sewer service area of the city of Eau Claire. The request is consistent with our comprehensive plan and plan commission has recommended approval. Questions for Mr. Tufty? I see none. On the motion then by council member T. Walt, seconded by council member Weld. Item 28 is moved. Discussion? There being none, clerk, please call the roll. Council member Johns? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. Quinn Cameron? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Tewa? Aye. 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 Well? Aye. Aye. And that uh, ordinance is adopted. The last item on our agenda is an ordinance in accordance with the Wisconsin statutes annexing to the city of Eau Claire part of the town of Seymour, known as the Bouchard Petition, north of LaSalle, east of Abbey Hill Road. Mr. Tufty. Uh, this is the property uh, north of LaSalle at McKinley Road. Uh, this is a 4.51 uh, acres of land. There is an existing single family home on the property. Again, the parcel is within our sewer service area. Sanitary sewer and water is available on LaSalle Street. The request is consistent with our comprehensive plan and plan commission has recommended approval. Questions for Mr. Tufty? Council Member Tewalt. And then Council President, I may need your guidance on what I'm going to ask, so, but I had misunderstood our procedures when there is only a one day meeting. This item does not constitute a public input time. I communicated otherwise to some, so there may be some people. Could you just briefly explain how the public will provide input on future, future development in this area. If, sure. Because if they came, then they would at least know that. Thank you. Uh, eventually, we anticipate a development proposal uh, for this property. Uh, we anticipate it will also include property to the north as part of that development proposal. Uh, that development proposal uh, will involve a rezoning, uh, which is a public hearing uh, and we send uh, notice out to all property owners within 300 feet of the site of that public hearing. We also post the public hearing uh, within the newspaper and post a sign on the property. Uh, the public hearings are held both before Plan Commission and City Council, and the folks are certainly welcome uh, to attend those meetings. Thank you. Is there a time frame? for uh, anticipated development? We, we do not have a development proposal at this time. We're anticipating late summer is the best I can say. Late this summer? Yep. Mm -hmm. So late in the summer of 2017, a development of proposal may come forward and that process will, be, will roll along. Does that answer your, answer your questions? Thank you, Mr. Tufte. Council Member Strobel has a question too. Um, thank you, Mr. Tufte. Would there also be a development agreement that, that would involve some public input or public input at the plan commission level, something besides the rezoning? Sure, there will be a, a plat that'll come along with the uh, development proposal and the plat uh, which will involve street and utility extensions will have a development agreement which will come to, before council also, yes. I see no further questions then. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On a motion then by Council Member Klinkhammer, seconded by Council Member Von Hayden, item 29 is moved and discussion is in order. There being none, clerk please call the roll. Council Member Beaton. Aye. Emanuel. Aye. Kate. Aye. Klinkhammer. Aye. Ditchell. Aye. Strobel. Aye. Tewalk. Aye. Von Hayden. Aye. Well. Aye. Worthman. Aye. Shaw. Aye. And that ordinance is adopted. There's one ordinance for introduction tonight, uh, a charter ordinance relating to the city council and the reapportionment of aldermanic districts of the city. Do council members wish to suspend the rules and take up this ordinance tonight? 
I see no such desire. Announcements and direct or announcements are in order. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, no announcements uh, other than to just uh, wish all of you a happy and fun holiday weekend with your friends and family. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Announcements by council members. There being no further business to come before this body on a motion by council member Mitchell, seconded by council member Strobel, we are adjourned without objection. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.